Hi everyone, this is Deborah. It is two days after Christmas. So let me tell you what happened with my Christmas. Oh my God. I think I should take an aspirin before I tell you. Oh my God. Oh, let's see. I knew the storm was coming. I wasn't an idiot. My son was even nice enough to say, Mom, you really need to turn your car around, uh, facing the road. And um, I, I knew that I wasn't going to be driving out in it, so why even do that? I don't know. But um, so I'm a little bit flustered. Forgive me. Oh, my God. Uh, I have to think back. A lot has happened since Christmas. Um, let's see, I really should comb my hair. Ah. Uh, so. Let's see. So I knew it was going to get down to six degrees. That's six. One digit, people. <laughs> so I knew that I have to leave the faucets dripping. So I have three faucets downstairs. No. Yeah, three. The bathtub, the uh, bathroom faucet, and my kitchen faucet. So I did the little drips. Okay. Um... So I didn't know if we were supposed to do a stream or a drip, but I just did a drip because I got to pay for the water, right? I think I'm dehydrated. That's why I'm getting a headache. So, uh, I knew my Christmas was going to be different because when you get to be in your 60s, you have to compromise a lot. In the old days, my husband and I would go to my parents' house, which was the most fun. Then we would go to his parents' house, which was two hours away in Manassas. And then we got to go to the movies while we were there. Other than that, um, plus I finally get to see my husband, which I only saw between Christmas and New Year's for 40 some years. <laughs> yeah, because when you own your own business, there's no such thing as um, a vacation unless the woman plans it, right? So the holidays were always special to me because I got to, be with my family. So this Christmas, I knew my granddaughter was going up north to see her pop pop, which is my ex, and to spend the night with her mother, which she did. And um, so I knew I was going to spend Christmas alone, but that's okay. When you love yourself and you're happy with yourself, you can do this alone stuff, people. Now, in case you're wondering, uh, well, why don't I have a boyfriend? It's because I went on one date this year. First thing out of his mouth, and he owned like 500 a head of cattle. It was it was like that Jellystone, or not Jellystone, Yallistone, uh, you know, with Rip and Kevin Costner. He had a huge farm, 500 acres. I said, oh, okay, I've lived on many farms. I can deal with this. First thing out of his mouth, can you cook. I said, oh my God. Yeah, I can cook. But uh, it turned me off. Okay, back to the story. So I haven't dated since then. Plus, I was sick the whole month of November and December and you guys know this. Why am I burning up? My God. Um, so I didn't have anybody special to spend the Christmas with. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to use a tissue, people. Oh my God. I really should take an aspirin. Mm -hmm. So I was prepared to spend Christmas alone. Now get this, all my life, I've never been able to watch the parades or any Christmas movies from start to finish all the way through. This is the first Christmas in my whole life I've been able to do that, and that is a blessing. Uh, and I actually got to cook. Uh, I used, I got to bake chocolate chip cookies, a fruit cake, my fudge, two things of Chex Mix. Oh, oh, let's see. Um, I'm sure there was other things. Oh, the butter balls, yes, which went fast. There's nothing left. <laughs> so. 
I was happy I got to do that much. Now here's the here's the bad part. For five Christmases, people, I worked on Christmas and New Year's. Yes. I'm the one employee that would cover that because my parents are gone. Um, and I knew that the other younger uh, co-workers had small children and their parents were still alive. So I would cover for them. So this Christmas was the first one that I had a home for the first time, a real house, not a condo. And um, let's put some of this on the decollete, right? Okay. Okay. Yes, they're real. Okay. Okay, back to the story. Oh, God. So I really wanted to spend Christmas in my own house. And I got a lot of flack for this. I really did. So I wanted to turn on the Christmas tree lights and have them on for Christmas Eve. And I went to turn them on and they wouldn't turn on. The power was out. Now keep in mind, there was no snow here. No snow had hit, no snow at all, right? No snow at all had hit and here it is, no power. And I'm going, what the hell? So, um, these are smudge sticks from Skin. He doesn't sell them anymore, but thank God I bought a lot because I really like them. It's, um, they last a long time. So, um, okay, so I have no electricity and it, it's getting cold in the house. So I didn't know what to do with my hot water heater. I'm not, it was, you know, a heat pump. I don't know what to do, so I didn't touch anything. I just, didn't touch the heat pump. I just dripped the faucets. Now, it's getting cold. So I put on three coats, two pairs of socks, and I went and got as many blankets as I could, and I put them in my bed, you know. And I got a, a good book, and I hunkered down for the night. Let me tell you, it did get cold, but I was cozy. I remember there was a time when I was a young mother. I I was 50 cents uh, short on paying my Northern Neck electric. This is a true story, and I know a lot of you are going to say bullshit. This was back in the 70s. They cut my electricity off in the dead of winter, and um, I had to move in with my parents and cut, I think, it was 40 loads of firewood because I helped the fuel assistance program in Lancaster County. We got paid $40. My parents had 60 acres uh, of wood and um, that's how I got my electric turned on because $500 back in the 70s was a lot of money because you had to pay what you were in arrears, which I was only at 50 cents in arrears, but you had to pay the deposit, which was $500. And this is Northern Neck Electric. Now, nowadays, this is what my little sister told me. Uh, she keeps up on this stuff. I, I don't. I would rather, excuse my spit, I would rather be gardening or decorating. She goes, Debbie, didn't you fill out the disability thing with, with Appalachian Power? And I go, what are you talking about? She says, yeah, if you're disabled, you put in this report, you have to do it every year. They will put you at the top of the list for your street for for any assistance in getting your power on. So I, I did call them. So let me get back to the story. So just remember that, people. So I said, the minute that I load up my car, that's when the electric will be turned on. That's, the, that's my luck, right? So, I said, well, I can't deal with this no more. I, so, I started loading my car. I didn't know how many days. Now, remember, I got 10 feral, feral cats that depend on me. Their water's frozen. Uh, I loaded up my car, which took a lot of effort. I, and I realized... That is why, that's when a woman needs a man. 
<laughs> yeah, to help her load the car. That's why I realized that I don't have to be alone and that I really should start dating again, even if it's somebody for a companion, not to get married, you know. So um, I decided, you know, I don't have to be alone. That is a choice that I've made, but it would be nice if I had somebody that was there for me during times like this and vice versa. I'd be there for him, right? So I uh, loaded up my car. I got permission from my granddaughter to go to her house and uh, drove there, unpacked the car. That's when I called the electric company and they said, yeah, we'll send you the form. Okay. And they go, oh, by the way, your power's turned on. I said, oh my God, because I did put in a report, right? And now I got something in my eye. I said, oh my God, I hadn't even been there like, you know, five minutes. Uh, Jesus. I hadn't even been there. So mad. Well, grateful that it was turned on. So uh, I've got a humidifier on and I think that's what's wilting my lashes. Okay. So I drove back. Now, I did not let the faucet drip upstairs. That was a big mistake because it was frozen. I said, oh my God, I can't afford a plumber. What the hell am I going to do? Oh, hold on tight. <clears throat> what the hell is going on? Okay. So I said, I better crawl. So when I got back to my house, unloaded the car. I said, I better go in my crawl space and look to see if any pipes busted. Everything looked okay, but the sump pump that my son had put in, I noticed the bucket was above the floor. So if this is the floor, the bucket was sitting on the floor, right? So I, I Googled and I realized the bucket's supposed to be sunken in the floor, right? And I said, and, and, and the sump pump was dry. No water could get in there, even though there was this much water. So I called my son. He goes, Mom, who cares if it's flooded? It's, it's frozen anyway. And I go, no, it's not. The water's not frozen down there. I don't even know where the hell the water came from because I just spent three grand putting up new gutters. And I know that the spouts are like three to four foot away from the perimeter of the foundation. Um, I said, you know what? My son's done, made a mistake. I, I had a feeling because he just went down there and put a sump pump in a bucket and thought that was enough. And I do my research. So now I realize that I've got to go down there and dig a hole uh, and sink this. Now they told me I had to do like three sixteenths holes in the side of the bucket up and down like this. So uh, I will put two video uh, a video downstairs. Uh, so I'm not. I'll do a video of downstairs at the end of this video. So I think I'm right. Now, how do I do have a drill. I don't know if I have a bit that with any kind of a bit. Can I just use any bit to drill holes in a bucket? I don't know. So maybe you guys can help me. Uh, or should I go and order a certain bit? Um, so I asked my son to come over and, and help me with this. And he goes, Mom, now keep in mind, my daughter's still mad at me and, and her dad for not bailing her out of jail or bonding her out. But that's her problem. I couldn't even if I wanted to because I don't have 50000 or ever how much it was. She never really told us. So I said, you know, I'm not going to be the ass. I am going to be the one that still wishes my children Merry Christmas. So I wished my son Merry Christmas and my daughter. Never heard a word from either one of them. But when I told my son that I had had no electricity, he goes, well, mom, you didn't even check on me. I go, what? 
I wished you Merry Christmas, and I told you I sent him a picture of me under the covers with a flashlight. If that isn't a, a, a sign that I have no electricity, I don't know what is. He never checked on me. He never wished me Merry Christmas, so now he's angry that I didn't check on him. And he says, Mom, I haven't had electricity for three days. Well, evidently he had a fireplace where he's at because he was able to go to a neighbor's house and get firewood. Now, I do have a chimney, but they when they flipped this house, they covered up the fireplace, I guess, which is probably best because um, a real old house like this, you would probably have to restack the stone and whatever. So, um, so I am so confused. And this is what I think. I think people project how they feel about their self onto other people. Uh, and I still haven't heard nothing from him. I, I sent him a video of the way the sump pump's supposed to be. And I told him, I said, I'll give you gas money, you know? Nothing. So I've decided I give up with my adult children. My daughter's almost 50 years old, and my son's going to be, I think, 48. Um, I give up trying. I really do, and that's sad. But I am going to devote the rest of this year in having fun, people. Yeah, because this is my time. As that's what my granddaughter says. Now, she's on her way over here to open her little gifts. I didn't have much money to go towards hardly any gifts at all. Because I spend $60 a month feeding these cats. So they won't starve. But, um... So, I hope your Christmas was better than mine, but I am going to make a point to have fun this year. You best bet your ass on that. And happy birthday, Jesus. Yes, at least my house is decorated beautifully. Uh, my table's decorated, even though I don't have any food to put on it. Uh, <laughs> at least the table is decorated. Okay, so... Thanks for listening. Bye. Okay, I'm crawling in down here. Oh my God. I do have the PEX line though. That's what my son said was good. Okay, here's what I'm talking about. Okay. Nope, I was wrong about what I told you. The top of the bucket is not it's actually level with the water. The water is not frozen. And uh, you said to check the float. Make sure the breaker, it's still plugged in. Jeez. Watch me touch this and get electrocuted. God. I see the float. I'm afraid to touch anything. I'm so afraid of electricity, but <clears throat> so water's gone down a little bit, but it's not frozen. And uh, this looks wicked down here, don't it? Oh lordy! Uh, we never got around to covering these pipes. My son said it was unnecessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't know. It just scares me. So that's what we're looking at.